Environmentalism kills. Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society, and I recently received a new essay from Drew Godofridi, a Belgian philosopher, author, and jurist. And I think it's very important that people understand what's going on in Europe. So I asked his permission if I could read it on camera in translation, and he agreed. So that's what I'm going to do. Environmentalism kills. According to a survey published last week by the British magazine The Economist, the heating and electricity restrictions that Europeans must face and will have to inflict on themselves this winter will cause the death of 80,000 to 180,000 people. Yes. Yes, you read that right. By comparison, the war in Ukraine has so far caused the death of an estimated 60,000 soldiers. Do these numbers surprise you? It's that the press that you subsidize with your money, and in many ways, especially when you don't even read it, has barely mentioned it. Indeed, 46% of Belgian journalists vote Ecolo, or the Green Party. However, these deaths announced by The Economist will not be slaughtered by Putin, nor will they fall from the sky. These deaths will fall on the fields of honor of the green ecological ideology, which for 20 years has dominated energy policy in Europe. While the construction of Europe, which was not yet a union, stems from the desire to provide all Europeans and their economy with cheap and affordable energy, Today, the elites of the EU no longer swear by environmentalism, which is the perfect negation of the above. Under pressure from Germany and environmentalist I ideologues, the EU has been multiplying its diktats for 20 years against the only source of clean, non-CO2 emitting, non-intermittent, sustainable and authentically European energy, nuclear energy. France, which is as weak, in fact, as it speaks loudly, soon sided with the environmentalist desires and whims of Germany and the EU, going so far as to shut down a powerful, fully operational nuclear power plant to please the Teutons. This plant, Fessenheim, could have operated for another 20 years but Germany and, of course, French environmentalists did not tolerate it. So we closed Fessenheim. This closure alone will cause devastation this winter in France. Because the mad environmentalist drift of the elites made in the EU, generally end of careers and prescribed from national politics, does, of course, not exonerate the states from their own drifts. Let's take the example, quite randomly, of Belgium. Glorious Belgium is the only Western country that persists in shutting down fully operational nuclear reactors since the invasion of Ukraine. These closures, delirious and criminal, are the direct consequence of the greatest achievement of the Greens and ecologists in politics, the 2003 law planning the destruction of the Belgian nuclear power and of their presence with the Vivaldi government. A pleasing coincidence which allows environmentalists to provide after-sales service today for the 2003 law by Olivier Deleuze, Greenpeace, Ecolo. And that explains der Untergang, the downfall, in the form of an inverted asymptote of ecologists in the polls. Mrs. van der Straten, probably the least competent Belgian minister since 1830, represents nothing and no one, except perhaps Gazprom, who was the privileged client of the law firm in which she was a 50% shareholder, Blixt. This does not prevent this creature who lies as she breathes from presiding over the energy destiny of the country to the enamored applause of the press. Meanwhile, the Ecolo voter, the green ideologue, is a moujon, a cross between a sheep and a pigeon, sitting in her living room this winter, temperature set at 
15 degrees Celsius facing the candle, which is now her main source of lighting. The Mougillon is obviously starting to ask herself about questions about the merits of her electoral choices. It's a little late, my friend, because people will die this winter by tens of thousands. Environmentalism kills. So that's a short commentary by Drew Gottfriedi, Belgian author, jurist, and philosopher. You'll find his book, The Green Reich, in uh, multiple languages and available online. For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling.